Hi, I'm Pat. I'd like to offer a little background on why I created this video at this particular time. As I think about it, the impetus seems to have come from a few sources. In early May, I received an email from Legacy.com, the online memorial guestbook company. This was a reminder that another anniversary of Father Raftery's passing was at hand. Did I want to write another comment in his online guest book, or perhaps make a contribution to a charity or cause to mark this event, it asked. And then a few days later, I came across a pile of old videotapes I'd shot years ago with my first video camera, well before the introduction of iPhones and other smartphones super equipped with 1080p and now 4K capabilities that we pretty much take for granted these days. Though the older video is nowhere near the quality of today's, I'd better get the content of those tapes transferred to a computer before it's too late, I thought. Starting that job, I found a tape I'd shot at the May 2004 Mass celebrating the 60th anniversary of Father Raftery's ordination. And finally, around the same time, I happened to read a brief opinion piece in the Washington Post that I loved. There's a link to the article below if you're interested in reading it. The author explained that during the pandemic, she'd found herself making lists of people she'd known because she, quote, didn't want to forget them. And she asked, if I don't remember them, who will? Her lists, she explained, were just her way of remembering all the people who'd made her life better or more meaningful. In remembering them, she also felt she was in some way bestowing or granting them a measure of eternity. Reading that piece, I realized that instead of making lists, I'd been putting together little movies to remember people during this time. And Father Raftery, it seems to me, is very deserving of being remembered. There's no question in my mind that my life was made better and more meaningful because of him. So how could I not undertake this project? So now I'll take us back to Father Raftery's 60th ordination anniversary mass, especially focusing on the homily he gave that day in which he offered his thoughts on the Catholic priesthood. While we can't know how he'd view the state of the priesthood these days, whether he'd feel it has developed or regressed since that day, technology in the meantime certainly has progressed and become vastly more sophisticated. His 60th ordination anniversary mass was shot regretfully, but necessarily at the lower resolution in consumer level video cameras of the time. It's not nearly as good as it would be if shot today, but it's better than nothing and definitely good enough to help us remember him. Five weeks ago, a nurse, after taking my blood pressure, asked me, how many grandchildren do you have? <laughs> and I answered, none. I'm a priest. And then added, I'm not even going steady. <laughs> and then just four weeks ago, a six-year-old boy asked me, do you take your teeth out at night? <laughs> And so, I want to make it a clear, declarative statement. I testify that I am semi-retired, a senior citizen and priest who is three months and a half older than the Pope. The celebration today, I felt, should be a grand occasion. The February 27th, 8th, 9th weekend was a low point for me. 
because in that weekend, the John Jay report came out about the sexual abuse of children by some clergy and bishops. It was a horrible time for me to think of the lives of victims scarred for life and bitter. And I thought in Chicago, there are 2% of the priests who have been accused of such a wrongdoing. And I wanted to speak for the 98% who have been smeared in the media. So how to celebrate the ministry of 60 years for the Church of Jesus Christ? The Second Vatican Council said, the Eucharistic sacrifice is the source and the summit of the Christian life. The priesthood in its deepest reality is the priesthood of Christ. It is Christ who offers himself, his body and blood in sacrifice to God. And the Father by that sacrifice makes us most righteous and accepted in his eyes. The priest daily celebration of the Eucharist goes to the heart of the mystery. For this reason, the celebration of the Eucharist is the most important moment of my day and the center of my life. In my 21 years as a priest, I have presided at the Eucharist 21,000 times or more. The masses are the sum and substance of my spiritual life and its center. And I get the energy to minister in service to the people of God from the Mass. Although the priesthood of ordination and the priesthood of baptism differ in essence and not only in degree, they are nonetheless related to the one priesthood of Christ. The ministerial priesthood of ordination consists of three degrees of order, <coughs> bishop, priest, and deacon. The ordained priesthood <coughs> embraces more than the sacramental commission and religious responsibilities. In building the community of Christians, the priests can never be servants of any human ideology or party. Rather, their task as heralds of the gospel and pastors of the church is the attainment of spiritual growth of the body of Christ. <clears throat> One question is critical for some seminarians and priests today is the eroding identity of the priest. Why be ordained? What is a priest? What do I do? Or who am I to be if everyone else is chipping away at my traditional role? The blurring of the roles of the priesthood and laity is due to lay lectors, ministers of communion, finance committees, parish councils, school boards, but all of these and more do not downplay nor diminish the importance of the priesthood. Rather, it enhances it. The ordained priest is by definition the professional and religious or spiritual leader and by sacramental commission, the, co the colleague of the bishop in the service of a particular Christian community. This is what is distinctive about the priest. Cardinal Avery Dulles, a fine, outstanding theologian, says it well in defining ordination as the recognition of the gifts of leadership and at the same time a sacramental commissioning that empowers them to govern the community in the name of Christ. The church is really a community of ministers and disciples. 
the laity have a direct sharing in the saving ministry of the church itself by reason of their baptism. The whole people of God is the church, laity as well as clergy and religious. The ordained priest's style of leadership is changing. He is the animator of the laity, the enabler of ministries, the convener of the assembly, and presider at the Eucharist, where he confects the body of Christ and also the community body of Christ. Those who argue in our time for a de-emphasis on ministerial priesthood, who rejoice in the decline of vocations or the growing number of resignations, have in their moment of anti-clerical passion against the quality and kind of leadership which only the ordained priest is in a position to give. The ordained priesthood is utterly crucial to the life and mission of the church. The laity collaborate and participate not only in internal affairs of the church, but also in secondary duties and activities which belong properly, though not exclusively, to them. The role of the priest, like an orchestra leader, is to be a collaborator, drawing out and coordinating the charisms of the laity and, and building up the body of Christ. I'm optimistic about the future of the church and the priesthood. There will be radical changes in structure on both the archdiocese and parish levels and in personnel. There are many decisions that have to be made. This Sunday, traditionally in the church, is called Good Shepherd Sunday. The word for shepherd in Latin is pastor. And Christ, of course, is the good shepherd or pastor, the leader of us all. I served as a pastor for 22 years and 38 years as an associate pastor. I am happy in being a priest. I enjoy it, and I'm very grateful to you in your presence this morning. God bless you all.